Earlier this month, SpaceX and United Launch Alliance landed a major contract with the U.S. military that will see the two companies handle effectively all of American space launch services through 2024, with SpaceX handling 40% of the workload and the ULA tasked with the other 60. Between these launches and its own Starlink installation efforts, SpaceX especially will have its hands full. But it's not as though Elon Musk or Sir Richard Branson or even the mighty Jeff Bezos himself can go popping off rockets whenever they feel like it. No, there are rules for this sort of thing put in place by NASA to ensure that missions to space get off the ground safely. And if specific criteria are not met, that fuse is not getting lit. Getting into space is one of the single most complex and intricate processes humans have yet to devise. Just figuring out when to set the launch window depends on multiple factors including what the goals and objectives of the mission are, where the Earth is relative to the celestial body we're headed to. Even the type of rocket used makes a difference in the calculations. The two biggest factors, however, are the spacecraft's destination and its solar needs. For example, some spacecraft may need full exposure to our local star to power themselves, while others may need to avoid the bright solar rays in order to study deep space. Thus, the launch window, the span of time during which a rocket can successfully take off and hit its target, for putting, say, an Earth-observing satellite into LEO, will therefore be different than one needed to launch a Dragon capsule to rendezvous with the ISS. Heck, the launch window for Mars missions is only even open once every 26 months. Now, the reason for that is due to the relative orbital positions and movements of Earth and Mars within the solar system. We want Mars to be as close to the Earth in their orbits as possible so that when we send a spacecraft to intercept the red planet, we're doing so using as little fuel as possible. See, the fuel that you need to carry to get to your destination, that comes at the expense of the amount of cargo and supplies you would otherwise have on board. So in order to ensure that our explorers will have everything they need when they get there, we use Mars' gravitation to help pull the spacecraft along as it coasts into orbit. This move is called the Hohmann Transfer Orbit, and while it is considered the most efficient means of moving between a pair of planets, the timing has to be precise. If a spacecraft is launched from Earth either too early or too late, it'll miss the rendezvous point with its Martian target. Of course, you can't just point a rocket directly at Mars and pull the trigger, at least if you actually want to get there. Since the Earth isn't just moving forward through space, but also revolving at a rate of roughly a thousand miles an hour, rocket launches follow a curved trajectory, so you can't just aim straight for your target. You have to throw the spaceship like a football. Let me explain. Just as when a quarterback makes a pass to the receiver, the ball gets all of its energy with the initial throw, then follows a curved flight path leading the receiver, so both the ball and its target arrive at the same point in space at the same moment in time. Touchdown, we're on Mars. Getting supplies to the ISS, which is just 248 miles away, is no easy feat either. While the Earth is spinning along at 1,000 miles an hour, the ISS actually remains in a fixed position above the planet, circling every 90 minutes. Now, since Mission Control at Kennedy Space Center wants to spend the least amount of fuel and effort navigating to the ISS with a cargo hold full of goodies, they wait until the station is as close to directly overhead as possible. The problem with that is with ground tracking. See, since the Earth is turning and the ISS remains fixed, while it might fly over Kennedy on one orbit, the next time it comes around 90 minutes later, the world will have literally turned by 1,000 miles. In the ISS's case, it tracks westward by 1,000 miles every time it completes an orbit. Thus, the ISS resupply runs only have a single window per day since the ISS will only pass overhead once per 24-hour planetary revolution, what we also call a day. NASA flight officers also have to contend with the phase window. That's the amount of time the resupply spacecraft will have to catch up and match speeds with the ISS before it runs out of fuel. As I said, space is hard. Mother Nature is an equally formidable foe. Anything from high winds to freezing clouds to electrical fields are enough to delay or outright scrub a $57 million launch attempt. But as always, NASA has plans to accommodate an unruly atmosphere. It's called the Lightning Launch Commit Criteria, a series of 12 rules that must be met before a scheduled launch may proceed. They mostly deal with mitigating rocket-triggered lightning, which happens when a rocket and its electrically conductive exhaust pass through an atmospheric electrical field. Now, this is actually really cool. The rocket will compress the electrical field as it rises, compressing it by as much as two orders of magnitude. That means that lightning from this field is 100 times more likely to form than naturally occurring bolts, 
and this continues until the field breaks down and a lightning bolt is actually formed. NASA learned about this effect the hard way back in 1969 when the Apollo 12 mission suffered a pair of such strikes during launch. Now, had those bolts struck something important, that mission could have gone sideways dangerously quickly. Rolls complete. Roger, Pete. Seconds. Okay, we just lost the platform, gang. I don't know what happened here. We had everything in the world drop out. Roger. As luck would have it, they only damaged a couple of non-essential systems, and the crew was able to successfully complete their mission. I don't know what happened. Uh, I'm not sure we didn't get hit by lightning. I think we need to do a little more all-weather testing. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay tuned to Engadget for full NASA coverage.